The place look up is right around the corner and today I'll be going over everything you need to know to qualify to round two and make it brilliant. The place look up is extremely placement heavy. What this means is that we want to limit how much we fight in our mid games. Because even if you're an amazing fighter, fighting is still essentially a risk that isn't worth the potential reward most of the time. Placement to kill ratio is 65 to 1. When going into this tournament, you can secure yourself a full extra end game if you go in with the mentality that you're only gonna play seven games. In tournaments where placement is this heavy, it is extremely important that we try our absolute best to not die before we get into the moving zones. In cash cups and even up in CS opens, it's often smart to go for high kill wins. And I'm not saying that going for a high kill game one is a terrible idea, but make sure you go into the tournament with the mentality that you're not gonna die off spawn once and you're just gonna play a clean and consistent tournament all the way through this way you will have so much more time to milk out placements the games you actually play how you time your cues is one of the most underrated skills to have when it comes to becoming a high achieving fortnite player even though you should limit your fighting because there is no point in fighting for points you need to take the necessary risks in the games you play we gotta keep in mind that the first upcoming open placement cup is for players with with over 2000 arena points meaning the players will meet in the tournament won't be the best so if you're extremely shambles then you should 100 confidently go in for fighting a team if you see a great opportunity the best loadout to run in the placement cup opens is definitely a scar thunder pump double heals so minis and splashes or bigs and a hammer and then your duo want to hold scar thunder and triple heals in round two the best loadout is going to be a bit different considering surge will most likely be in nearly every game i honestly recommend running a double of red eye one hammer and then your duo want to yet again hold the triple heals it's also incredibly important to abuse augments in the placement cup some of the best augments you can use is a forecast where you can see the next zone if you get super lucky and get this as your first augment i will give you the opportunity to quickly and easily rotate into the center of the second zone which will make your mid game insanely easy especially in opens flash medic is another augment that is honestly just just ridiculous this augment makes it so that you can get splashes from fruit boxes ammo boxes saves it's a way higher chance to get a splash from a chest and if you get this augment you should easily be able to get at least six splashes redeploy or aerialist as it's called is also very good for rotates if you don't have a hammer and i would recommend prioritizing this augment if you struggle with finding those hammers in your games there are plenty of other great augments that i would recommend researching before the tournament but these are, in my opinion, some of the most valuable ones when it comes to doing well in a competitive setting. Moving on, we of course have to talk about playing endgames. Playing endgames is very different this season to last, because there is so much chaos with the hammers, breaking builds, and people having forecasts. It's more important than ever to have good positioning in the endgames you play, and specifically, the moving zones. Now, if you don't have a set in stone plan that you're following in the moving zones you play, it will be quite hard to stay consistent in the placement cup. So I'm going to give you two endgame plans you can follow if you want to. The first one is playing dead side in every moving zone you play. Now, playing dead side isn't always beneficial. The pros is that you won't meet a lot of players, especially in second, third, and final moving. But again, this is also a con. Getting refreshes on a dead side can be difficult if you don't know exactly what you're doing. Another con of playing dead side in moving is that if you're too far on the dead side, you'll often find yourself getting sprayed. This is most of the time because you either go too far to the dead side, as I just mentioned, or because your timing of your rotate just isn't right. So how do you get to the dead side? Well, it's pretty simple. In 50-50, wherever the zone is covered in storm, that's the side you want to be on in first moving. In second moving, you want to be on the side that was furthest up in first moving. Now, one thing you must keep in mind is that people have forecasts, and 85% of the players in your lobby will position themselves closest to wherever the first moving is pulling, second moving, and so on. If you're a little bit smart, you can use this to your advantage when rotating. Don't go to the closest spot to second moving in first moving. Position yourself a little further away because everyone else will have the forecast augment enabled. Additionally, what's incredibly important more than anything this season is rotating instantly 
constantly in the moving zones you play. And I'm not talking about rotating three seconds after a pulse, because that's already way too late. I'm talking about the second, the millisecond even, the moving zone pulls, you start rotating towards the new moving zone that just appeared. Naturally, there are a few times where you don't want to rotate instantly, and that's when you don't have any mats. But if you don't have any mats, you've played your early and mid game completely wrong. If you're good at positioning and rotating, having mats in second moving should be incredibly easy. And if you don't have any mats in second moving, play patiently. Gather awareness with your thunder out and go for a refresh with your duo. The other way of playing moving zones this season is playing the space. The space can also be categorized as a type of dead side, because the space is where the moving zones open up and allows for you to rotate pretty much freely. Very, very few players play this spot in the moving zones. In the background footage right now, see a first moving zone. As you can see, the zone pulls west, but it opens up on the north side. If you can manage to get to right here and start tarping in, north side will be more and more open and give you a lot of space to work with. Now, I would recommend playing one of these two ways, but there are naturally way more ways to play endgames. However, playing dead side, playing the space are the two easiest endgame strategies to make it past opens. Refreshes in moving is also something I want to give you guys a few tips on. The mentality you should have at this tournament is that you need to go for refreshes front side. A lot of players that I watch go for refreshes backside. And going for kills backside is very ineffective because players on backside most of the time have very scuffed mats, meaning when you kill them, you'll just get their siphon, which is 150 mats. However, if you stay front side during the moving zones and then whip out a pre-edit when you're on front side, kill a tarper, which is surprisingly easy, you can get 1000 mats easily. That is the equivalent to seven refreshes on players that give you siphon. Following tarps is also another way to get easy refreshes this season. Considering there are hammers in the game, a lot of people have become a bit more sloppy blocking their tarps. And we will make sure to make this a massive problem for them in the placement cup. If you see a long tarp built in brick or metal in moving, I highly recommend following it. Stay aware and see if the players in the front of the tarp see you. If they don't, you most likely have at least one free elim. At the end of the day, any relatively good player will be able to qualify through round one, if they keep a good mentality throughout the entire tournament. Now, raging a bit and being mad at yourself is one thing, but if you start flaming your teammate after game number one or two, well, you're just throwing your own bread. If your teammate makes a massive mistake that gets you both killed in one of the first few matches, please just try and be quiet the first few seconds let him explain himself and then whatever rage you have towards him to say it all out insanely loud inside your own head raging at your teammates won't get you any closer to qualifying so just try to keep a positive and good mentality throughout these three hours now ladies and gentlemen that is it for me today best of luck to all of you in the placement cup and i'll be seeing you guys very very soon with another video my name is mary tm stay safe and take care Soon.